Good afternoon and welcome back to Stuttgart, Germany here at the Porsche Arena. My name is Liam Lonsdale and I'm joined today by two people, Sasha De Julian and Udo Neumann. Uh, it's just gone 5 p.m. local time. Finals will be getting underway in less than three hours. We're very excited about that. But before we get into the action, first of all, Udo the technical wizard is actually going to do some very interesting movement analysis uh, and, and kind of talk us through the process of route setting and, and decisions around route setting, right, Udo? Yeah, this time is re really about more uh, the, the process of route setting and the, the considerations that go into the route setting and how they keep on shuffling uh, uh, problems around, blocks around to the very last minute almost. And uh, yeah, I just want to give you some background information uh, about the, these, those considerations. Awesome, interesting. Yeah. Hit it, let's go. Oh, no, okay, then we, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first uh, um, uh, take is uh, Robert Leisner, one of the root setters. Great root uh, setter. A great root setter, great German root setter. And he set this problem for the uh, women's uh, semis this morning. No, and this is him basically testing his own problem. And so, and you, yeah? the first thing I noticed is that he's not actually wearing a shoe on his right foot. Yeah, this is, but this, I think the, this is, comes with a profession of root setting. They, they <laughs> work a lot under really uh, not ideal conditions, you know. And when they were setting this, it was about uh, 30 degrees. And uh, just let me go back a little bit uh, on, this, on, the, on this problem. So it's a very complex new style problem, you know. You see how he gets momentum with his counter movement of his left leg. And... Uh, Actually, he's wearing a shoe on his left yeah. foot yeah. to uh, get the toe catch, you know. And this toe catch is really subtle, and it looks as if it doesn't do a whole lot because he's losing it a little bit uh, afterwards. But it's actually essential to uh, hold the, the left hold. It brings his body over to the left. And this problem was actually a men's problem. Yes, yes. They, uh, because of this complexity, they decided that um, decided against using it uh, for um, for the women uh, uh, in, in today's semis. And um, it would have worked. What we know now, it would have worked because when the competition was starting, they turned on the air conditioning and it was 10 degrees centigrade uh, colder. Right, and these are extreme slopers, and friction yeah. makes a huge difference, yeah. especially on these problems. Yeah, and, and this is also when they, um, you know, so, so basically it would have worked in today's semis with the conditions being a lot better than when they said it, mm -hmm. but they decided against it because it seemed to be too complex. Right. You know? uh, so, <laughs> so they said, okay, let's move this problem to the qualification for the, for the boys, and let's set another problem that uh, follows the same idea, you know, so that's a, a new school problem. And Robert started setting this new problem. Similar for, starting for holds? Same, uh, yeah, but it was, the main idea was to keep the uh, as true to the original idea and just reduce the, um, yeah, the, the complexity a little bit, you know, and you can tell, you know, you, for example, you still see a thumb catch or a footstep, it was actually planned as a footstep, which, uh, which is slightly less com uh, complex than a, a toe catch, you know, because you can just step on it. As opposed to catching underneath. Yeah. Now, when these root setters are designing these climbs, obviously they have to keep in mind the fact that each competitor has a different body type and different height. So they can't exactly force the sequences as much as one would think. No, 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 this is really, yeah, the root setters for themselves, if they communicate, they're always talking about ideal uh, betas, and, and this is what the competitors uh, think exists, but w w if you analyze all these competitions, you come to the conclusion that it's more about finding your own uh, ideal solution. Right. And, not, and, and uh, not second guess what the root setters would have in mind. And Udo, when yeah. you say, you know, they decided to switch it from women's to men's because of the level of complexity, why is it that 
of the women seemingly can't do this level of complexity. They can do this level of complexity for sure, you know, and uh, some of them like this morning, uh, Alex Puccio, I, I will show you later, uh, flashed this problem, you know, the, the, uh, the, the blue problem that they're just setting. And the, the root settlers, mm -hmm. when they were testing, it was only after Sukuro Hori, who is yeah. really a fantastic, wait, uh, I go back a little bit, uh, they will see uh, how he does it. Well, no, they were testing it, and you can see that uh, they're all fantastic climbers, but after a full working day, after 10 hours of setting, they couldn't climb it. And then they had Tsukuru do the move, you know, and then they realized that they don't need the footstep or the uh, toe hook again. Right. Right. And coming back to the uh, why uh, they were not using it for the girls, it was more, the, uh, it's still even 2018. This is that, Kyra Condi. That uh, the girls, ta uh, it takes them uh, more attempts to build up this determin determination and this commitment. And with five minutes, they need longer, right? Exactly. Okay. That seemed to be a little bit risky. So interestingly, on the left-hand side, Kyra is in a failed attempt, and the right-hand side, Kyra is in a successful attempt. I'd really like to see that again, actually. Can you rewind that, yeah. Yuda? So just try and pick apart the differences between the movements here. Um, oh, yeah. there's Sukuru again. Yeah. So. Her launch position is much deeper on the right, which is a successful move. Yes, and her right leg it, uh, um, gives her a little bit, uh, it's a little bit further out to the to the right. Oh, she was so uh, fast with those hands. You can see hands. that in her successful attempt on the right, her right hand led much quicker to follow the left than on her failed attempt. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's really, I, uh, you can come to, to zillions of, of conclusion of why one thing yeah. w works or not the other. And, uh, and this is only comparing one person uh, with him or herself. Right. You know, and it gets a lot more. <laughs> well, that's Chloe Collier and Katya Kiprianova. Yes, uh, two very different body uh, types. And, uh, and then we have two entirely different solutions. Right. You know, suddenly. Right, so when the root setters are trying these problems beforehand, are they considering down the running list how each competitor, you know, we had a 16-year-old Natsumi who was much smaller than every other competitor. Are they thinking how would Natsumi at less than five feet tall do this problem? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think like in modern bouldering, um, the, the use of volumes, you know, where you can step on where you want, where yeah. it's ideal for your body, uh, uh, for, for your limbs, limb leg, uh, length, and uh, for, for your span and everything. Uh, already the volumes kind of make it easier for the, for the root setters. I think that's the biggest set that volumes brought to, to climbing, you know, that this, uh, so you don't uh, have it like a certain the sequence that either fits you or it's out of your reach, right. but instead you can be like, ah, this is maybe a little bit too low, let's move a little bit higher, you know? And, and uh, no, it's totally into their consideration. And they're always, and, and they're, they, they look for the, <laughs> if you want to call it like this, the lowest common denominator, right. like the, uh, the, the Japanese range, girl, height. yeah. But they're also really afraid. I mean, this is basically the worst case happening is that somebody really tall makes a joke out of the problem. You know, they basically right. climbs around the whole idea. I know? mean, that was like Jan a few years ago yes. here when he climbed up yeah. the center of the yeah. Super Boulder. Yeah, yeah. even in, in the World Cup in Munich last year when Jan uh, became European Championship, uh, his champion, he did the same thing in one problem where he spent. It's not necessarily so much easier climbing, but it comes across really uh, it's not ideal for the root setters. It comes right. as if, you know, you still have to be a very good climber. Root setters call it breaking the problem. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's interesting that you bring into note the revolution that volumes have brought to competition climbing because I was competing a few years before and there wasn't as emphasis yeah. of volumes on our problems. Yeah. The style has changed significantly. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, this is really, uh, this is, I think, where this idea of this ideal beta comes from. It's still from the, from rock climbing, you have a beta, you know, left hold, uh, right hand, and um, uh, it, it still comes from the, uh, this, and whereas modern bouldering, and uh, there's some in, in modern knee climbing too, it's much more about uh, finding your own body position. The options are there. 
it's, it's more about you finding them. That's the beauty of rock climbing is that it is so accommodating to so many different body types. And that's what's interesting of us here watching the semifinals and up next the finals to see how these different body types, how these different climbers approach the problems. Right. Yeah. You have more yeah. video to show us, you Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, we were just, uh, wait, maybe I'll go a little bit back because we need to switch. Uh, uh, Bob, yeah, on the iPad. So, uh, again, uh, Chloe. And this is um, about uh, a tenth of a slow motion, so that's ten times longer than uh, in real time. And it's really, if you're, I mean, this is uh, one thing if you want to analyze your own climbing, it's a really good idea to do this in this uh, split screen way. There's a, um, a, there are apps for this, as for everything. And uh, it really gives you a lot of insight in your, into your climbing. If you just put your phone uh, uh, in front of you, you do an attempt, and do, then you compare this attempt to another attempt and, and try to learn from this. So this is first place yeah. qualifier Alex Puccio from the USA. Yeah. Yeah. She flashed this boulder. She was the only one to flash this uh, boulder. Yeah, and we've seen this again. You know, this is when, when still the the women, the female field is still not as condensed as the male. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, it's really, this is the... Uh, Natsumi. Natsumi, Natsumi, the 16-year-old Japanese climber. Yes. And again, all the different options. And this is what uh, you just saw, but let, let's just, uh, I just go a little back, you know. Uh, I was just talking about you analyzing your own climbing. Right. You know? And it, it's really interesting. Now, uh, now the camera is basically in front of the, is facing the wall. But it, that only gives you half of the story, you know. Right. From the side, you see that uh, uh, how far she uh, mm -hmm. swings out is also a huge element. Now, this is Will Bosey from yeah. Great Britain. Yeah. He was the first <laughs> person to do this boulder. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what I really like in, in uh, what I liked in this round, in the semis, was such a diverse uh, style of climbing, you know, because this is almost what you would call old school nowadays, and especially the, the strong... Uh, we call them testosterone bombers. You know, the, the strong <laughs> boys really love this style yeah. because it really allows them. It's, it's not as frustrating as this uh, kind of, of sloping handhold. It really allows them to apply their strength. One thing you might have noticed, like in terms of comparing climbers, is that uh, um, what's his name, uh, Ogata uh, Yoshiyuki, uh, Yoshiyuki uh, really took less time uh, uh, for the boulder problem. Yeah. Uh, he arrived at the same hold in far less time. Uh, but also the split screen didn't there. qualify. Fun? Also didn't qualify. No, no, he didn't. No, no, it's, uh, it's not necessarily about th that, but here the same thing, you know, like uh, Alex starts a lot less uh, um, and uses less time for this boulder problem. Uh -huh. And this, again, if you want to analyze your own climbing, that's a good way to do it, you know? If you just look for very, it's very simple, uh, very primitive to do, but uh, of course, the harder the climb gets, the faster you want to move. That's very right. obvious. Right? In, in route climbing and in bouldering, we do many drills with pacing. And that has to do a lot with how fast you're yeah. doing separate intervals of training so that you can be doing two set two moves per second yeah. is generally the rule of thumb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and of course, it depends a little bit on the rock type. You know, right. if you have like, sharp pockets that you really, painful pockets, yeah. you might want to use a little bit more time to, to get them right. Something that yeah. some climbers watching may not know is typically, as you mentioned, you climb faster through the difficult sections, slower yeah. through the yeah. easier. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is where many traditional climbers struggle a little bit. That they, their their pacing is really the uh, same same a right. little bit, you know. That it, or even on a on a fairly high level, you see this difference. Uh, that somebody like Adam Ondra, if he switches on, he gets super fast through the crux, yeah. and then he rests, 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 and he gets really relaxed. He watches his breathing. So he's really good in pacing himself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Udo, um, we're going to have the finals here in just a few hours. Uh, you've been paying very close attention to the competition so far. If I had to put you on the spot and ask you to pick a male and a female, who would you pick? I, I think like, a little bit based on what we saw here, uh, that Alex was flashing the last problem. And also she, she's last year's winner. And, um, and Mio has a... A shoulder injury, uh, so I uh, and yeah, you don't have to dismiss uh, Sasha Geo, maybe. No, but I think maybe those two for the final. Maybe yes, 
Yeah, although, I mean, Mio today seemed to be really, uh, she was slamming really well. But I still would think uh, Alex. And with the boys, I almost uh, I think it's a little bit, maybe a little bit the most extrovert uh, type wins. You know, the Jim previous one. one. Or, uh, or Jenny or Kuda. Jenny. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh my gosh, it's an extrovert <laughs> off. <laughs> it's a battle of the extroverts. So. Yeah. That would be a great <laughs> super final. Yeah, totally, totally. You know, and, and well deserved. And, and they're both. Uh, not perfectly happy with the season so far. That's also an ingredient that always worked at Adidas Rockstars, you know, that, yeah. uh, that when Gianni Kuda won, it, that the season didn't go too well. Right, to I mean, we'll, we'll actually see in the in the finals, there's a video of the, all the previous winners and the yeah. year that Yerne headbutted the buzzer yeah. and was just so visibly yeah. emotional yeah. to have won. So yeah, yeah we're definitely looking yeah. forward to seeing those guys later. Yeah. We're supposed to have some sort of athlete joining us um, but I can neither see any sight nor sound of them. I mean, Sasha's here. <laughs> Sasha's going to be with us for the duration, but we were supposed to have um, Sean Coxie. We were maybe supposed to have Sean McCall. We were supposed to have quite a few different people, but it looks like we've been abandoned. Um, so failing that, well, there's a few I, things that we have to say. Go I on. think that it would be an interesting topic of discussion to discuss the difference that you may see between rock climbing and competition climbing because I'm sure many of our listeners today are coming from rock climbing backgrounds or maybe find more passion there. And just noting what goes into competition climbing and how has it veered away from rock climbing, or has it? Yeah, I, I mentioned one, one aspect is definitely that like limestone, pocket limestone, it can be slightly uh, uh, yeah, sharp yeah. and you need uh, more aesthetic strength to really get the pocket right where you can't climb as fluid as on these plastic sloping holes. You know? right. So that's one aspect. So that, that basically, it's n I don't necessarily see it that these guys, are, they're not necessarily better climbers in any respect, but they're far more advanced in the use of momentum, for example. You know? And it's really, right. what, what I, I, I really like for myself, from a personal view, I really like to see climbing uh, in its whole, you know, where we come from when we're living on the trees, you know, the whole three-dimensional aspects of it. It's almost, for me, that the modern plastic climbing, as absurd as it sounds, it's almost taking us back to this more uh, dynamic move. We see monkeys mo uh, movement, we see right. monkeys moving. Yeah. That's, that's a really <laughs> interesting analysis because some people could say that competition climbing is going, veering away from rock climbing over the years. Yeah, I know that, uh, but I don't, I tend to not agree, you know, like, I, I don't know really, but I, I also what kind of rock climbing are people really talking about? If it's only the, the sport climbing or that started in the, in the 80s, but it, it, this is a fairly short uh, time span, you know, that's uh, sport climbing that got steeper and steeper, it's fantastic, but it's, for me, that's only one aspect of rock climbing, you know, and as soon as you try to do a multi-pitch route, like, for example, even the nose or half dome or, or so, suddenly you're dealing with corners, you're dealing with, uh, uh, like, all, I mean, the, the great roof could be a boulder problem, uh, it's fairly long for a boulder problem, but the Houdini uh, uh, corner could be a boulder, would be a fantastic World Cup boulder problem, you know, so. <laughs> so are you yeah, saying it's true, yeah. that these competitors could be training for the nose? <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, Adam Ondra did the right. dawn wall fairly quickly, and I'm sure York that... Jörg freed the nose. Uh, freed the yep. uh, York freed An the nose. An amazing competitor. Yes, amazing, uh, amazing competitor. And somebody like Gianni Kudor yeah. uh, would be... I, I Was actually on El Capitan last year. Yeah, he, di uh, he didn't really focus on something uh, right. extreme, but... Uh, I, in 10 years or so, maybe five years already, I totally see him uh, uh, trying Dawn Wall or something else. Uh, 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 Udo's prediction, you heard it here first. <laughs> Yerne Kruder in the super final and on the Dawn Wall. <laughs> yeah, but this is the fantastic thing we about climbing. We have high climbing. expectations <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no fresher <laughs> uh, uh, No, but, but this is what I really, really like in, in right. climbing. If something doesn't work out for you, if you're unhappy with the competitions for whatever reason, no, so there is a... a you're still a fantastic climber, and you can put this to work uh, in any context. Yeah. Right, there are so many avenues of yeah. what describes yeah. a climber that yeah. makes it so fascinating yeah. to watch the finals tonight. Yeah. So, Udo, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you guys at home, we have various things to tell you. Next time Sasha and I will be live, we'll be at 7.15 p.m. local time. 
So you can extrapolate that depending on where in the world you are. We'll be live with a pre-show before we go live for the final. The final broadcast will begin at 8 p.m. Sasha and I will be joined by Sean McCall as our Coco commentator. Uh, Sasha, where can people watch? People can watch on www.adidas-rockstars.com forward slash live. Can also take part in the social conversation, hashtag Adidas Rockstars. The streaming, I believe, is on Facebook at Rockstars Community and on Instagram at Adidas Rockstars. So you can watch on all those different channels. If you are wanting to watch on social media, it's much more interactive. We very openly uh, recommend you getting in touch using the comment section. Uh, you can contact us directly on Sasha DeJulian on Instagram and at Liam Lonsdale on Instagram. Other than that, it's one more time a thank you to you, Udo. Thanks to you, Sasha. Thank, thank you. you. Um, and we'll be back at 7.15. Make sure you tune in. We'll see you later.